obviously as a leader, you're, you're setting the example for the crew and you're building the culture. And I think particularly the military, a leader can, can have more influence on the culture and the success of a mission than any other position. And, and that's true, certainly on the outside as well, in the non-military roles. You have to accept, I think, and be confident enough to know you're not always going to be right as a leader. I think you also have to be comfortable and confident enough to demonstrate that. So I had, you know, my my son's, one is already out of the military, so he's a Navy veteran, and the other son is in the military. And it's sometimes interesting to see their perspective and and hear them come home and talk about, you know, what they had to do for the day and, you know, the idea of, what I, what'd you do today? And he's like, well, I, you know, we swept, we swept the the courtyard all day in the rain. I'm like, why did you sweep in the rain? Well, I don't know. They wouldn't tell us. We just, that's what we were told to do. Did you tell anybody? Oh yeah, we told them. They just said we had to do it. Quit asking, quit asking, you know, this is your order. So I know it exists and I know that I can't expect that everybody, uh, every leader out there is going to have the time or patience, um, you know, to explain it or, or communicate in a way that's, you know, that might instill a little more, uh, trust, I guess, and confidence. But as a leader, as you get your, as you become more senior, it's incumbent upon you to demonstrate and exemplify what you expect from your other leaders beneath you. You know, I knew as a CEO, if I was short tempered and I yelled at people in public, man, I just gave permission to like 5,000 other people to do exactly that. So again, err on the side of kindness, err on the side of being patient, err on the side of accepting criticism publicly. Ideally, that's going to translate down the ranks as it were. There's the trickle down effect. Um, but I knew it wasn't perfect. I knew that, you know, you have you have to be patient too, knowing you have leaders that are learning beneath you. You know, you might be a division officer and have a chief working for you. So you're the officer in an organization. You have a, a chief petty officer, a senior enlisted that works for you that's given some of the day-to-day -day orders. And they might be a little more short-tempered in their style and delivery. Um, it doesn't mean you allow them to be toxic or yell at people, but you have to use the opportunity as well to mentor and develop your leaders. So it's, you know, whether that's setting an example if you're in a high enough position or sometimes it's just the mentoring day to day and, and pulling people aside and saying, Hey, you know what? I know you think that's effective, but I got to tell you, I don't, I don't think you're going to, that's not an effective style. In fact, we'll, you know, lose people. And now that I'm in a non-military position, I see that even in the, in the outside. And I think it surprised me a little bit at first when I see very, you know, senior people in the nonprofit world that, that tend to be short tempered and, uh, and yell at people more than I ever, maybe I ever saw the military. And then I kind of take a step back and go, you know, the reality is they just haven't had the benefit of a lot of leadership training that I had throughout my career. They haven't had any good, maybe mentorship or feedback along the way. Um, but it's absolutely something I have to address because otherwise, and this, you know, in this line of work, people can quit and leave. Um, and in the military, you can't take for granted just because people can't just quit and walk off the ship that you can take advantage of that. I think you, you know, it's more incumbent to treat them with respect. Mm -hmm.